on October 28, 2008, 36-year-old mother of three and Jamestown, New York resident Corey Lynn Anderson vanished. On her way home from a morning shift at a local college library, Corey stopped at her boyfriend's place of work to drop off lunch. After a brief conversation with her boyfriend, she drove away in the direction home in her dark blue 2005 Dodge Caravan. This is the last time Corey is known to have been seen by anyone. After failing to collect her son from school that afternoon, Corey was reported missing. The search for Corey would shine a spotlight on her husband, Kenneth Ken Anderson, from whom Corey was separated at the time. A separation triggered by Corey's discovery that her husband hadn't actually divorced from his previous wife. Corey would also allege that Ken had been abusive and controlling throughout their relationship. Reaching out to the first of Ken's four ex-wives, Corey would find that she was not the only one to have suffered Ken's controlling and abusive behaviour. Immediately after their separation, Ken would begin stalking and harassing Corey, with Corey adamant that Ken had been entering her home and following her. This later culminated in Ken's arrest after a GPS tracking device was found on the underside of Corey's car. Ken would be served a restraining order by police, a restraining order that he would breach just weeks later. Corey's car would turn up abandoned two days into the search, but no trace of Corey has ever been found. This is the story of the disappearance of Corey Lynn Anderson. 36-year-old Corey was the devoted mother of three children, two teenage daughters, Caitlin and Shannon, from a previous marriage, and a young son, Zachary, from her relationship with Ken Anderson. Corey lived with her husband and children in the city of Jamestown, in the southwest of New York, close to the New York-Pennsylvania border. With a population of 30,000 people, picturesque Jamestown is described by locals as having a quaint, small-town feel, with residents enjoying its culture, its sense of community, and its safety. Corey worked two jobs, one as a medical transcriptionist, and the second at the library of Jamestown Community College. Corey was a much-loved friend and relative. She was particularly close to her mother, Vicky, and sister, Autumn, who described her as kind-hearted and loving. In the year 2000, eight years before her disappearance, a recently divorced Corey met the then 40-year-old Ken Anderson online. Corey and Ken married just a few months into a whirlwind romance. The two would welcome into the world their first and only child, Zach, not long after this. Few details are available about the early days of Corey and Ken's relationship, though, based on how quickly the relationship progressed, I think we can safely assume that Corey initially believed Ken to be a man worthy of being her husband and a father to her child. There are some things about Ken, however, that Corey would not discover until years later. Ken Anderson was 12 years Corey's senior and 48 years old at the time of her disappearance. He had been married four times prior to meeting Corey. Beyond the opinions of people related to Corey and testimony by one of his ex-wives, little is known about Ken and he has never spoken publicly about any of the allegations against him. Ken may have had links to Kentucky as he briefly moved to the state after his separation from Corey but returned soon after. After a whirlwind start to their relationship, Things soon began to deteriorate for Corey and Ken, and the couple would separate in 2005. Corey would allege to her family that Ken was extremely controlling and that he was often abusive, though the specifics of Corey's abuse allegations are not known. Corey's daughters, mother and sister would later report having never liked Ken and that there was something, quote, off about him. The catalyst for the couple's separation would come when, while searching through some paperwork, Corey came across evidence that Ken hadn't divorced his previous wife. Despite Ken's pleading, Corey immediately ended the relationship. By being legally married to two women at the same time, Ken had committed bigamy, a Class E felony in the state of New York. Though bigamy can carry a three to four year prison sentence in the state of New York, it is not clear what punishment Ken received, if any. With Ken's bigamy rendering their marriage all but void, Corey was able to begin the process of legal separation, though this is not something that Ken would take easily, as demonstrated in an email sent by Corey to a relative, later published by the Huffington Post, which read, in part, quote, I would like to get the property worked out and just move on as much as possible. I feel like he's dragging his feet with that because of a control issue, end quote. Corey clearly felt that Ken was holding up the divorce process as a means of controlling her right to the very end. In the same email, Corey would say, quote, 
things with Ken have not fully resolved and probably never will. And quote, I have come to the conclusion that he is a psycho and thrives off of trying to make others feel like they are insane. End quote. Ken's divorce shenanigans, however, were not the only concern that Corey had about Ken's behaviour following their separation. Corey had begun to see Ken drive past her home multiple times a day. She began to feel as though she was being followed, and she was certain that Ken had been entering her home when she was out, after finding items displaced. Corey's concerns about being stalked by her husband were later vindicated when she found a GPS tracking device on the underside of her car. She immediately reported this to the police and Ken was arrested. Ken was served with a protection order preventing him from contacting or approaching his wife. In 2007, just weeks later, Ken would violate this order and be re-arrested, eventually being released again, this time on probation. Throughout this time, Ken also broke several visitation schedule agreements for his son, Zach. Agreements would be reached, but Ken would not stick to them, frequently failing to show to scheduled visitations. Corey's experience with Kenneth would eventually prompt her to reach out to his ex-wives. Ken's first wife, Stephanie, agreed to speak with Corey. What Stephanie had to say about her 12-year marriage to Ken was deeply disturbing. Stephanie and Ken met when she was 16 years old and the couple would later marry and have four children. Stephanie alleges that Kenneth was very controlling, that he would lock her in their home when he went to work and they would be physically and emotionally abusive. Stephanie left Ken after he allegedly threw her on their bed, held a gun to her head and threatened to kill her. Stephanie alleges that after telling her husband to quote, do it, he held a pillow over her head. Thankfully, and for reasons known only to Ken, he did not go through with the act. Stephanie states that she knew that if she didn't leave, then she was going to die, so she took her children and left as soon as she could. Despite the harassment and the ongoing issues with divorce proceedings, Corey made every attempt to move on with her life. She remained a caring mother, a reliable employee, and she even began dating again. At the time of her disappearance in 2008, Corey was in an increasingly serious relationship with an unidentified man. The couple were reportedly planning a wedding and Corey's family were aware of the relationship and knew of the man. Weeks before her disappearance, Corey said to her mother, if anything happens to me, you take Zach, referring to her youngest son. Corey clearly feared that her life was in danger. On the day of her disappearance, Corey went to work at Jamestown Community College as normal. She finished her shift at around midday before going to drop off lunch to her boyfriend at his place of work at Lake County Dodge on Washington Street. After a brief conversation with her boyfriend, Corey drove off in the direction home at approximately 10 past 1 in her blue 2005 Dodge Caravan. This is the last time Corey is known to have been seen by anyone. After failing to collect her son from school and after repeated unsuccessful attempts to contact her, Corey was reported missing by family. Corey's sister Autumn says that as soon as she heard that her sister was missing, she knew that she was, quote, gone, and that, quote, Ken was responsible. The search immediately began. A search of Corey's home turned up items that she had taken to work that day, as well as some groceries purchased that afternoon. This confirmed to police that Corey had arrived home after leaving Lake County Dodge at 10 past 1 that afternoon. There was no signs of a struggle, and only Corey's car, purse, keys and phone were missing. Two days into the search for Corey, her car was found abandoned in a rural area of Courtright Road in Jamestown. The car had been parked out of sight of the main road and next to Woodland. The location was approximately one mile from Corey's home. There were no signs of a violent act having been committed in the car or in the immediate vicinity of it. Corey's phone, keys and purse were absent from the car. New York State and local police ramped up their search, utilising dozens of officers, canine unit, all-terrain vehicles and a helicopter. The search area focused mainly on the wooded area near where Corey's vehicle was found. Meanwhile, police spoke to the man who was the last known person to have seen Corey, her boyfriend. He was ruled out as a suspect by police very early on and little further information is available. Presumably, Corey's boyfriend was at work at the time of her disappearance and he therefore had a solid alibi. Police also spoke with Ken, questioning him for hours and searching his home. Details of exactly what Ken told police are not available and it is not clear if Ken was able to offer an alibi. Corey's mother Vicky would later claim that Ken limited the places in his home that the police could search. The next day, Kenneth hired an attorney and informed police that any future queries should be forwarded to his lawyer. 
Police claim to have only spoken with Ken once since then, briefly, at the police station, with his attorney present. As the search for Corey went on, the case began to turn cold. Tips were followed up on, and all avenues of investigation were explored. There was simply no trace of Corey, and no sign of what had happened to her after arriving home on the afternoon of the 28th. Years would pass by, but the police and Corey's family would not give up on the search. This was the scene eight years ago in Chautauqua County. New York State troopers scouring a wooded lot off Courtright Road in Busti, looking for Corey Anderson, a young mother of three who disappeared on October 28, 2008. And this was the scene yesterday. Nearly eight years later, police were searching the same area where Anderson's van was found abandoned in the woods two days after her disappearance. Although police say it wasn't one credible tip that prompted the search, Corey's family believes something very strong had police hoping to crack this case. I feel there was something something for them to do this big of search. We're learning more about yesterday's search, which involved more than 50 New York State troopers, members of the Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office, Lakewood Busti Police, and Jamestown Police. We've also learned approximately 20 acres of land was grid searched by police, each officer tracked by new GPS technology. Although investigators won't say how many items were taken from the woods, they do say anything found will be taken back to the lab for analysis. We have to go through all the items that guys may have picked up as even as something very small. In 2016, following what is described as a reliable tip, a wooded area near the New York Pennsylvania border, just off Courtright Road, was searched using canines, bloodhounds, and metal detectors. New York State Police claim to have gathered some evidence from this search, though they'd never provided specific details to the public. In an interview with local news outlet WGRX TV, Corey's mother, Vicky, claimed that Corey's keys and shoes were found during the search. I have not been able to corroborate this claim, and it is not known if the findings from the 2016 search have moved police any closer to solving Corey's case. In 2019, the new owners of one of Corey and Ken's former properties on Slide Road in Ellery, Jamestown, granted police the permission to thoroughly search the home. It seems that police were not able to conduct a more thorough search whilst Ken was still living at the address, implying that Corey's mother may have been correct in her claim that Ken limited the early police searches. It is not known what police specifically found at the address, if anything, though the lead investigator, Joseph Smith, says that DNA was taken from the property as well as Corey's car back in 2008. Detective Smith hopes that new developments in DNA science may lead to a breakthrough in the case. Again, specifically what samples were taken or what was found is unknown. Ken Anderson would eventually finalise the couple's divorce. He would marry his sixth wife just a few years later. The former husband of a woman who vanished eight years ago in the southern tier faced a judge today. Ken Anderson was arrested in Kentucky Monday night. He's accused of kidnapping and raping another woman at a motel there. News Force Dave Graber has the latest on the investigation from Asheville. Ken Anderson appeared in a Kentucky courtroom today, some 500 miles away from his home here in Asheville, New York. It's the same home that he shared not only with his former wife, Corey, who disappeared in 2008, but it's the same home that he shared with his current wife, who he's accused of kidnapping and raping in a motel room in Richmond. Her story is very similar, almost identical to Corey's. The similarities are shocking, says Autumn Boardman, the sister of Corey Anderson, who never showed up to pick up her kids from school eight years ago last month. It just scared me for her. It scared me because it's a, yeah, another woman's life that's going to be absolute hell because of this man. Corey was never found. No one was charged, and state police cleared her ex-husband, although she had a restraining order against him just like his most recent victim. She would perpetually lock her windows and doors, even in the middle of summer, because she was petrified of him coming in. Police in Richmond who arrested Anderson on November 8th say New York authorities told them Ken is their man in their cold case. New York had already gave us a heads up on everything, so we basically knew what to look for anyway. I mean, he'll have to face all the charges here before you know he would go back there. But Ken Anderson is at this point not a suspect in Corey's disappearance, not even a person of interest, according to state police investigators. Simply put, 
it's far too early to determine. We are continually investigating this over the last eight years, so we're just gonna take this information and now thoroughly go through everything to see if it does breathe new life or add anything to our case. New York State Police say they're working to find out where Richmond authorities got their information because they say their investigators didn't divulge such details. And while that's led to frustration for Corey's family here in Chautauqua County, it's given police more interest to look into the 2008 disappearance. In 2016, Ken Anderson was arrested and charged with the alleged kidnapping, unlawful imprisonment and rape of his sixth wife. Ken's wife alleges that he took her against her will from New York to Richmond, Kentucky, raped her and held her captive in a motel room, threatening to kill her if she tried to escape. Police rescued the woman after she was reported missing and police were able to track the couple down. During a police interview, Ken's wife claimed that he was extremely controlling and had assaulted her in the past. Kenneth pleaded not guilty to all charges. As of 2021, no updates are available in the case against Ken. Police have not been able to tie this incident to Corey's vanishing. And despite hoping to garner more information from Ken about Corey's case once they had him in custody, no new information has been publicly released. What has become of Ken since then is not publicly known. As for Corey's loved ones, they claim to have made peace with the fact that Corey is very unlikely to return home alive. Her mother hopes that Corey has found peace. The family will never give up hope of finding her and bringing her home. Theories in Corey's case are limited. A lack of any known forensic, witness or CCTV evidence has really made this a challenging case for police. We at least know that she arrived home after her last known sighting due to items found at her home. After that, we know nothing except that her car was found a mile away near a wooded area. If what Corey's mother claims is true, then police found Corey's shoes and keys in that approximate area years later during the 2016 search. Police though have never publicly confirmed this. And who gave the tip that prompted the 2016 search? What was their involvement in the case? Where did they get their information from? None of this information is publicly available either. Police also claim to have taken DNA samples from Corey's vehicle and home. What were these samples? How did they impact the case and police theories about it? Was local CCTV checked? Corey's car was found in a rural area, so perhaps there was no CCTV available. Perhaps that's the same reason why there are no known witnesses. A woman disappears during work hours and her car is abandoned near a rural wooded area. These factors would clearly reduce the number of potential witnesses. When an adult disappears, the prospect of a voluntary or staged disappearance is always discussed. Though we can never be sure what is truly going on in another person's mind, Corey was devoted to her children. She was in the process of rebuilding her life with a new man and separating entirely from her soon-to-be ex-husband. Corey's family did not report that she was suffering with depression, though she was of course dealing with the pressure of a divorce and trying to maintain her life while being stalked and harassed. Corey also vanished with nothing but her keys, purse and the clothes on her back. Her car was abandoned, but no damage was noted. All of this, to me at least, rules out the prospect that Corey ran away to start a new life or staged a crime against herself. The theory that Corey harmed herself or was involved in an accident and suffered some kind of amnesia can also be ruled out for many of the same reasons. Another potential theory is that Corey was the victim of an attack by a stranger or may have been unknowingly stalked. There is no evidence at all to support this theory. There was no sign of a struggle reported at her home, no witnesses reported a lurker around the property and no known CCTV or DNA evidence. Though this theory cannot be entirely ruled out, it doesn't seem likely that Corey met with violence from a stranger. Equally, there's no evidence that Corey was attacked or lured away by someone that she knew either. Many people were questioned, and no one that Corey knew is suspected of being involved in her disappearance, with perhaps one exception. Her boyfriend at the time was cleared very early on in the investigation, and there's no mention of any suspicion at all falling on him from either the police or Corey's family. The final and most popular theory is that Corey was taken by her then-husband, Ken Anderson, and presumably murdered, and her body either hidden or disposed of. Ken had been stalking and harassing Corey for years after their separation. He had a police protection order served against him, which he breached. He has an alleged history of violent and controlling behaviour against women. It is claimed by Corey that Ken was dragging his feet over the divorce process. 
and in the final weeks before her disappearance, it's clear that Corey feared she may come to harm at the hands of her husband, even asking her mother to take custody of her youngest son should anything happen to her. Ken denies any involvement in the suspected crime, and current known police evidence against him is insufficient to bring about any charges. There, however, seems to be only one theory in the mind of Corey's long-suffering family, and that is that their daughter, mother and sister was murdered by her then-husband, Ken Anderson, and they make it clear that they will not stop until they find Corey and bring the person who harmed her to justice. In the back of our minds, Aquisto believes that Ken Anderson, Corey's ex-husband, could have been involved in her disappearance. Corey had a protection order against him. In my heart, I know that Ken is behind this. Did he do it? I don't know. Um, but I know that he had something to do with it. At the time of her disappearance, Corey Lynn Anderson was described as a 36-year-old white female. If alive today, she'd be 49 years old. Standing at 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighing around 170 pounds, Corey had blonde hair that was naturally light brown, green eyes, and she wore wire-rimmed glasses. She was last seen wearing black corduroy pants and a black leather jacket. Corey has surgical scars on her abdomen and knee. She disappeared along with her mobile phone, keys, and a black 8 inch by 8 inch GH Bass & Co purse. She was last seen at Lake County Dodge on Washington Street, Jamestown, New York, at 10 past 1 in the afternoon on Tuesday 28th of October 2008. She drove a dark blue 2005 Dodge Caravan with the license plate number CX404. Her phone has been switched off since her disappearance and there has been no activity on her bank accounts. Foul play is suspected in her case. If you have any information related to the case, you should contact New York State Police on 1-716-665-3113.